Hi everyone, I am Leon from Colorado, and the question of the day is, should I save my RAW files? A fabulous question, no doubt, that every photographer has probably asked more than once a month. First, before we jump in, I just have to say, yes, I am a photographer therapist, but let's be honest, I'm not actually licensed. This is not binding legal advice. This is purely my opinion. I'm not responsible for your bits and bytes, I'm not responsible for your hard drive, your backup system. I cannot be held liable for any of that. Just wanted to make that clear. The big question is, why should we save our RAW files? And you might answer that by saying, well, I just want a good backup in case I lose my files or my client loses their files. And by that, I'm sure you pretty much mean the print-ready JPEGs. Because think about it, everybody. We've got the RAW files, but then we go apply these actions and presets and retouching, and then we create this print-ready set of JPEGs. Those are the JPEGs that we deliver to the client or we keep in the studio in case they want to order prints, right? Well, if you lose those files or your client loses those files, are we automatically going to go back to the RAW files and redo all that work? I sure hope not. I say a better method would be to have a better backup system for those clean and pristine JPEGs because those have all the hours of work that you've already invested. The other thing a lot of people toss out there as a reason to save the RAW files is, what if down the road I want to use this for my portfolio? Or maybe I want to add it to a stock agency. Maybe I want to use this for an ad. I might address this with another question. How many times have you pulled from the archives of old to update your portfolio? I mean, I believe as artists that we are constantly working to push our skills to the next level. We want to find the trend of today and we want to best that. We want to do better. We're constantly looking for ways to advance the art. And I don't think it's a very likely scenario that people are going to update their websites, update their blogs with old images. In fact, I would dare you today to go back to your blog and look at your first couple of months worth of posts. Review your images and just see what kind of response you get. In my years of working with photographers, I don't think I've heard one of them say, you know, I'm actually on a downward curve right now. My best work was like five years ago. If you want to save the raw file for this reason, to update your portfolio later, I don't think it's a great reason. Now, I want you to just for a moment think about your ideal client. Will you take files from five years ago and show those to your client today? No matter who your client is, they may not be a fashionista or trendsetter themselves, but no doubt they have a sense of style in reference to time, right? I mean, let's just say I throw out the phrase totally 80s. Likely you're thinking of pegged stonewashed jeans and neon colors and crazy wild hair. And so yes, every one of us can identify an era of style, right? Let me give you an example. Right here is my personal wedding album. Now, shocking, I know, but I was actually married in the 1900s, 1998. And while these photos are sharp and clear and they've got lots of detail, I guarantee you if we showed these to a bride today, first of all, she would say the album style is really bizarre. But she would also look at the dress, she would look at the flowers, she would look at the color scheme, she would look at the, the way that it was decorated, the flowers that were chosen, and she would know that these were old photos. See, every element of your previous subjects is a clue as to how old your images are. Do we want to showcase our oldest stuff? Do we want to showcase the work that is dated? But I think no matter what industry you're in, your images have a shelf life. Let's focus on those print-ready files, those JPEGs, and let's make sure we have those backed up in a thousand places so that we never lose them. So Peter Krogh, the godfather of digital asset management, suggests that we follow a 3-2-1 backup plan. So three different places on two types of media. Two types of media, I would say when, when Peter created this backup plan, it was probably a lot more popular to do DVDs. 
Personally, I'm done with DVDs. I hate burning them. I hate managing them. I won't index them well with a little printed card and all that stuff. It's just not, I'm not gonna do it. So I would just say two different hard drives. That's fine for me. And then having one off-site is the real key here. Now you could use a service like Google Drive. I've personally used a service called Backblaze, which I think is amazing. In the background, it just uploads your files to the cloud. Well, there you have it. That's my opinion. I hope it adds something to the thought process for you as you create your own backup plan. And listen, if you've got some ideas that you want to add to the conversation on backing up or whether or not you save your raw files, I would love to hear your perspective and your ideas. So please leave a comment. Let's continue the conversation and let's help each other out, okay? All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh.